Hey guys, it's Sean. I'm back at my friend Josh's house. Um, I've already done a couple videos here. Josh is my go-to snake expert. He knows all kinds of cool stuff and I learn something new every time I'm here. He also has lots of cool venomous snakes, including my absolute favorite, a Gaboon Viper. Now, Gaboon Vipers are a heavy-bodied snake that comes from Africa. And one of the coolest things I find about these snakes is not only the horns that they have on their nose, which you can kind of see, but it's also all these patterns and these colors going across his body. This is something that we call cryptic colorization. This allows the snake to blend in with his environment. So being that he's a heavy body snake, it doesn't really look like he can climb that well. He actually spends his whole life just sitting on the ground. So having all those colors and all those shapes actually help him look like leaf litter and broken branches and things like that. And he'll sit and he'll wait for his food to come to him instead of going out for the food. And he also is kind of moving in a different way than most snakes do. Josh, what's that movement that he's doing calling? So that's a form of locomotion called rectilinear movement. Um, so basically what the snake does is he uses the muscles on the bottom of his belly to inchworm himself along. Um, these snakes are very, very heavy bodied and can weigh up to 35 pounds in extreme cases. Um, these guys are probably right around 20 would be my guess. And uh, so they use their muscles on their belly to pull themselves along as their primary form of locomotion. Now you have two big hooks in your hand. What are these called and what is their purpose? So these are snake hooks. These are pretty basic tools that we use to help keep ourselves safe with, safe with these venomous snakes. Um, obviously safety is the number one priority. And if you'll notice, I'm not looking at the camera and that's simply because I need to have all my attention on the snake. Um, we need to be looking for any sort, like sort of body movements or any tells that the snake may be getting upset or stressed or anything like that. Right now he's pretty relaxed. He's got tongue flicks going, his eyes aren't dilated, his respiration is normal and he's just cruising around. So he's not upset or anything right now, which means we are usually pretty good to continue with what we're doing because obviously we don't want to stress these animals out beyond any uh, you know, reasonable point. And you know, so I kind of keep looking back and forth because I basically have Josh as my security guard right now to make sure nothing goes on with this. And being that he's the primary handler of the snake, he's going ahead and taking the lead on it. Now, typically when you have a venomous snake out or even a dangerous animal in general, it is good to always have backup. You don't want to be doing these things alone for obvious reasons. The this, this snake could be very, very dangerous. So we always try to make sure we have a crew of people, and we actually have a few people in the room right now that are also helping keep an eye on us. Now, we had talked about how he's a heavy body snake. He doesn't move a whole lot. He moves in a completely different way. What does he do when he goes to get food? How does that work out? Yeah, so these are ambush hunters. They're called a sit-and-wait predator. So this guy will find a game trail that rodents or you know birds or whatever else you know use frequently and he will lay along the side of this game trail and when prey moves by he will strike and eat it. Um, this species is actually a little bit different than a lot of the other venomous snakes because when they bite a prey item they don't release. They actually just let the prey, like they hold on to the prey item and they'll actually pick it up off the ground in their mouth. And the reason they do that is so the animal can't put its legs on the ground and run away. So they actually hold it up in the air. And one of the things to know about when the snake bites is when a venomous snake bites after an animal, uh, the fangs are folded up and then they come out and as they come out they're starting to fill up with their venom. But this snake is pretty special because he actually has the largest fang of any venomous snake in the world. It can be up to two inches long, which is pretty crazy when you look at the size of him compared to say like a 14 foot king cobra. This guy actually has larger teeth. Now they're also very muscular. You can see how big around he is. That gives him another special technique he uses when he's hunting, which I'll let Josh explain because I love when he explains this to me. <laughs> yeah, so basically what these guys will do is as they eat you know, more and more food, they will actually hold their fecal matter in. And so they won't go to the bathroom. And they'll hold all that in because what it does is it actually creates weight at the back half of their body, which counterbalances them when they strike. So these animals are the fastest striking venomous snake in the world, the fastest striking snake period actually. Um, and because they strike so hard, if they don't have any fecal matter in their body, they'll actually kind of boomerang because they strike so hard and fast that their bodies won't stay on the ground. So they use the prey items that they eat to actually counterbalance their weight and keep them grounded. That'd be like if you decide you want to eat really fast when pizza came to the table and if you weren't anchored down, you fly over top of the pizza and you miss it completely. Yep. So this guy's got to have a, a few special adaptations that most snakes don't have in order to help him. Now he has the, the horns on his face. Uh, we still don't really know exactly what those are used for. Kind of cool adaptations with a lot of reptiles in the world is that we're still learning more about them and how they use these unique features. 
Uh, one theory is that those kind of either look like a bug um, or a small animal that can kind of help things come towards them. Another is being that his body looks like it's a bunch of leaves and sticks together. Those could actually look like the ends of leaves or sticks as well. So there's a lot of different cool things going on with this guy and his overall look uh, the way that they move, this is always what made this snake one of my favorite in the world. And luckily, I have a friend like Josh who can not only show me this animal, but also tell me kinds of, all kinds of new facts every single time. Yeah, Sean, to go along with uh, what you were saying about the horns, one thing that they do is really interesting that's kind of unknown, too, is uh, they'll actually bob their heads. Uh, you can come into the room sometimes, and they'll actually kind of like nod at you. They kind of throw their heads around, and they'll like sniffle a little bit. like Not, a, not like a sneeze sniffle, but almost like a hiss. And nobody really knows why they do it. Um, my theory is that these snakes actually have super poor eyesight, as most snakes do. Um, and it's a form of communication. Like, a, hey, I'm over here. Um, that way they don't slither up or, you know, cross each other and end up accidentally biting each other. But um, every species, or every species in the bitus genus that I've worked with, which is what these guys' genus is, um, does that head bob. And it's, uh, it's really interesting to see, and it's definitely something that uh, I hope one day we can figure out why they do it. Well, very cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, our video today and that you got some new information on a very, very cool venomous snake. And thank you to Josh for bringing them out and showing us. Yeah, and we'll see you guys next time.